Hey everybody, I am Yolanda. And I'm Julie. We are coming to you live from the offices of Harper Therapy here in Roots, Florida, with really, really important topic of self-care, but self-care different than I think what many of us um, consider self-care to be. So we talked last time about just the, the importance and the stepping into self-care of acknowledging that we matter mm -hmm. and kind of showing up for ourselves in our life mm -hmm. is like ground zero for the very first yeah yeah and now you're going to build on this so this week what i was hoping we could talk about um is kind of the commodification of self-care and then also the weaponization of self-care Let's so, take a deep breath and slow yeah. that down because okay. th those are some these are some really important concepts that we don't necessarily give voice to, right? So the commodification of self-care. Let's yeah. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook um, or even you just watch TV and see commercials, um, there's a lot of a push out there about what self-care is, which is bubble baths, perfect vacations, um, buying a candle, um, getting a facial, getting your nails done getting your hair done. Those are the kinds of things that are really identified as self-care. And there's always um, kind of like a cost and almost like a lifestyle that's promoted with it. Right, so let's let's just pause and say there's nothing wrong with those things. That's not, not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. It is the, the, this idea of self-care and the true depth of, of what that practice can be has now become part of our capitalist yep. society. Yeah, we're told that we can buy our self-care. Mm -hmm. um, there's a silly little meme that was on Facebook and it was of a woman um, and the caption said, going to get my eyelashes done. And then her car check engine light was on, the oil check oil light was mm -hmm. on and she was running out of gas, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was like she was, in that particular mm -hmm. meme was really ignoring what needed to be taken care mm -hmm. of in the moment mm -hmm. to get something very like lovely eyelashes are great mm -hmm. but not yeah. what needed to be done in that moment mm -hmm. yeah. so the commodification of self-care really speaks to the messages that we're given that we have to buy what we need and somehow buying a candle is going to take care or getting the eyelashes is going to take yeah. care of these other things that are happening in your life yeah which I think sometimes we use because it's too painful to really pay attention to what we need to pay attention it's to. It's too painful to pay attention to the check engine lights. Yeah. yeah, it's too scary and big. Yeah. So um, in the blog that I think is attached to this video, there's a self-care triangle. And it's really beautiful because um, the very first level are things we need like shelter, food, yeah. um, and then it and then the levels increase, like we need a relationship, we mm -hmm. need connection, mm -hmm. we need um, mental health care practices, we need mm -hmm. to be connected to our bodies. And at the very top of the pyramid, like the 5% of it, those are the things that, like things you can buy, mm -hmm. like bath bombs, mm -hmm. eyelashes, mm -hmm. that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's really paying attention to what you need um, in a real way and not listening to the noise of being what we're told we need. And not just assuming that that's going to check all of your own boxes or, yeah. or address the check engine lights that are happening in your life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's really important because I think that we have to pause and really spend time with ourselves and think of what is it that I need in my life right now. Mm -hmm. And I think the pyramid is a good guide. Like, um, hopefully, most of us have our very basic life needs mm -hmm. met. Mm -hmm. And then, at least in this country, and then after that, like, what are we doing to nurture our relationships? What are we doing mm -hmm. to nurture our connection to something greater than ourselves? Mm -hmm. Our connection to nature, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I think self care has been commodified, and I think we need to reclaim that. Yeah, that's the first part. Yeah, and then the second part is is I work in the school system, and um, I've shared with you how difficult it is becoming to work in the school system in Florida. For me, um, and um, really how difficult it has been since COVID. Let's we can use that as a starting point. Yeah, there's so many demands that have been placed on yeah. the the school system and the employees. Yeah, I think um, we can also extend that to like medical professions, sure. therapists, yeah. um, people who worked at Publix during COVID. Yeah, all those kinds of things. Um, but what we are told in the school system is just self-care. Mm -hmm. Just take better care of yourself and you'll mm -hmm. be able to continue to meet these very big 
needs. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a weaponization of it as though I need to take a day off, I need to take care of myself, or simply this isn't working for me anymore. Mm -hmm. The message is just do some self-care. You're just not doing enough to yeah. in self-care, yeah. Yeah, and I think you hit the head on the nail. Like, yes, this is your experience in the school system and any kind of helping profession, mm -hmm. um, especially since COVID, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is definitely seeing a lot of burnout and a lot of this weaponization of self-care and um it, it can it can cause us to feel a lot of shame like mm -hmm. well i must not be a good enough everybody like, else is doing it right everybody else has it figured out yeah 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 it's important to, to put words around these experiences yeah and i think when things aren't working for us we do need to pause and figure out why mm -hmm. i think that we have gotten a lot of messages that there must be something wrong with me mm -hmm. and we don't pause and look at the system mm -hmm. and how that is complicit in our lives mm -hmm. yeah absolutely absolutely how much the systems that we are a part of have molded our these experiences and continue um to energize them to con mm -hmm. because it's I mean it serves the system right yes mm -hmm. um, and it, you know and then we serve the system right right and then yeah. it, so it's just a perpetu a self perpetuating cycle that we become part of yeah and at times we can choose to pause if we're lucky enough to if we have the privilege to and see what we can really do about that yeah and and it and sometimes it is um, just recognizing. The, the impact of the system mm -hmm. and that's the starting point you know mm -hmm. we've talked about different starting points and mm -hmm. like okay so my impact on a large system like the school system or even like systems of patriarchy and hyper capitalism like those things that really take a toll on our being you know physical mental emotional relational um it like how are we going to dismantle these big systems well not, I mean, we're not going to, no. but there are some, there's always something that we can do yeah, to, to take that, care of ourselves. To find is, that space of agency within that system. Yeah, which is self-care, which is a really great um, example of self-care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, helping professions, education, and also service workers, mm -hmm. I think everybody is affected right now. Yeah. And being asked to do more than we ever have. It, it's it's rough out there it's just yeah. it, there's a lot there's heightened stress it has been since covid i think you know there there hasn't been a, the the release valve pressed and what we're facing is like that likely is not a thing right so moving forward in this kind of soup of what we're living in now how do we reclaim some agency one of the ways that I think it's important to is in therapy, mm -hmm. like just working with somebody and having them just have a perspective, a co-perspective on my life or me sharing with someone else what my perspective is and just giving permission to know that it isn't you. Yeah, this is an outcome of being such so ingrained in, uh, in a broken system. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes that outside perspective can help with like that sense of agency mm -hmm. that you were describing. like. There, there are small things that I can do. Mm -hmm. Acts of resistance, ways of self-care, uh -huh. and places of agency that we all have that we don't always realize. Right, for sure, for sure. What great conversation about really the depths. You know, we, we often joke that we, you know, kind of go deep here <laughs> in, the, in the work that we do, and this is a great example of, yeah, you know, we got this, idea of self-care but what are we really really talking about yeah and making sure we don't use it against ourselves weaponize it against ourselves because we're so used to it being weaponized like mm -hmm. yeah to to have an experience of coming out of that shame of like there must be something that i'm doing wrong or mm -hmm. i must not be good enough yeah yeah so if what julie said is resonating for you and you do see how talking with someone can give you these different perspectives um, and help you to show up in your life in a different way, uh, give us a call, 813-434-3639. This is the work that we do here, and we will see you soon.